You ready, Lisa? Yeah. Let's head out. I started cross-country skiing as a small, small child in, in Prince Albert. Uh, growing up, we moved around a bit within Saskatchewan and been skiing all my life. Firstly, I'm very passionate about cross-country skiing, and so it's great to help people get involved in that activity. Um, so it, it's always fun to, to get people coming in. Maybe they haven't skied for many, many years or they were introduced to it in school and now as adults they want to get into the activity and, and just matching up the right, right product for them so they can get out there and, and enjoy it. Hey, I'm interested in looking at some cross-country skis. When you come in to, to get skis, we're going to ask a lot of questions. First, we need to figure out if it's a classical technique or skate technique that you're planning to do. Classical being in the following the trails, the cut trails in, in the snow, skating being on a wide, hard packed surface. So we have three different skis in what we call our um, recreational touring packages. Not that people are intimidated or discouraged, sometimes they're a little worried about putting on grip wax on cross-country skis. Um, we do lots to try to make that easier for them. In most ski, or most snow conditions, you get better performance out of a waxable ski. So we, we like to we kind of lead people that way if, if they're so going to ski a lot. And to make it easier for them, we do waxing clinics here at the store that are no charge. So we'll show them how to put wax on, how to get the right wax. And we also, on Facebook and Twitter, try every day to, uh, to post what the grip wax of the day is to make it easier for them. We will uh, just put some thin crayon a thin layer. The top, the, the tip and the tail gets ironed in, so we only, we're only with grip wax dealing with the middle third of the ski. This is already done. When you buy skis, that will get done for you. Otherwise, it should get done, we say, at least once a season or about every 100 kilometers of ski. And then give it a cork. The cork creates some heat with friction so that the wax bonds to the ski base better. Another layer. Do this about three times and you're ready to go. So once we have a ski figured out, we'll want to look at boots. And boots is the most important part. We want to make sure that it's going to be warm enough for you and comfortable. Because your feet aren't happy, it doesn't matter what ski you pick, you're not going to want to ski. So you may find it's a little snug to zip up at first, but it's stretchy at the back, and that loosens up after you wear it a few times. So we size skis by weight, not by height, um, but we don't need anybody's actual weight. Um, and so we just have, we have a machine where you stand on the skis and we compare the camber or the springiness of the ski to, to the skier's weight. And that way we make sure we have the right size ski. So this tells us where your wax pocket is and, and so that part of the ski is lifted up off the ground when you have weight on equally on each foot. Okay. Now I'll have you hold pole in each hand, this is for my safety, and have you stand on the toe of this foot. So that's good, you can step down again. So when you had all the weight on the toe of your foot as if you're about to kick when you're skiing, you compress the ski, I couldn't move the plate. And that's how I know this is the right size ski for you. Once we have those basics covered, then um, the, the biggest thing is when people walk, they have perfect weight shift and they shift their weight from one foot to the other. As soon as we put skis on their feet, they don't want to shift their weight perfectly anymore and they start to shuffle. And so we try to break that right off the bat and get you to keep shifting your weight back and forth. The first thing we want to do when we start skiing uh, is that just lift your poles right out of the snow. And I might even take them away from you, you'll see, and we're just going to walk. Shift your weight and walk. So like I mentioned in the store, the big mistake people make is they start shuffling and they don't shift their weight when they're skiing. So I like to start with people walking on skis. And if you're comfortable walking, we can even try a bit of a jog, still sh shifting your weight. That's it. Swinging your arms as if you're running. <laughs> it's it's relatively accessible for anybody to do. It's a great aerobic workout. It can, you know, like running, it can be as hard a workout as you want it to be. Um, it's extremely technical if you want to get very proficient at it. Um, you know, there's lots you can learn. You can continue to learn throughout your whole life to get better and better at it. 
Um, there's lots of people that do ski, so you, you can uh, join clubs and groups and ski with like-minded individuals. Well, perfect ski day, it's not that cold out. Uh, the glide is good, your grip is good, you just feel like you're flying on snow. And they lived happily ever after. And that's it. Well, guys, this was so much fun. Did you guys have fun? Yeah. Yay! Well, thank you so much. I love story time. The public library is an awesome place to come for story time, especially here at the Regina Public Library. We had a great time. And we hope that you boys and girls in TV land had a great time too with more great Saskatchewan stories right here on Max Magazine. Bye! Bye. Bye. Who here loves coming to the Regina Public Library for story time? Yay! Yay! All right, so why don't you close the book and then... <laughs> <laughs> If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Local On Demand, write us at max.local at sastel.com. Max Local Programming is now available online at maxonline.sastel.com.